fortunate this morning to have Senator the Anne, Honourable Anne Ruston, Senator for South Australia, Shadow Minister for Health and Aged Care, Shadow Minister for Sport and Manager of Opposition Business in the Senate, just in case you thought you were busy. And Anne's uh, come this morning to speak to us, so please join me in welcoming Anne. You passed on being funny. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, um, and it's great to be here. Can I too acknowledge the Larrakia people, um, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, and extend that respect also to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people in the room or who are listening online. Um, to Christine Duffield, uh, the President, to, to Kylie Ward, the CEO, to Claire Lane, congratulations on your Nurse Trailblazing Award. Um, what a fantastic initiative and it was really fantastic to have a, a read about what you have been achieving in your particular field of expertise. Um, more particularly, thank you very much for inviting me to be at your conference, but most particularly, thank you very much for holding it in Darwin. Um, having just come from Canberra, uh, I think we can all appreciate that uh, having a conference in Darwin at this time of the year is a whole heap better than having it down south. Um, can I also acknowledge you and all of your colleagues in the health profession for what you have done for Australia over the last two and a half years particularly? Of course, um, we acknowledge the extraordinary work of our health sector um, more generally, but I cannot even begin to imagine what you must have been through over the last two and a half years um, as you worked tirelessly under some of the most extraordinary conditions uh, and in doing so saved so many Australian lives and I think collectively Australia owes a great debt of gratitude to our um, professional health workers and nursing profession for what you have done. Yep. <clears throat> It is nice on the other side of, of the worst of the pandemic, we hope, um, that you actually also have been recognised as one of the best, if not the best in the world, in terms of how you responded to the pandemic. And it's a little comfort after what you've been through. The fact that you've been acknowledged for that, I think, is, is fantastic. Um, also great to be here to celebrate 10 years of the College um, of Nursing uh, and to celebrate the great achievements over those 10 years. And also it's fantastic to have the opportunity to introduce myself to you. Um, uh, I'm not completely uh, an alien to the health sector for a couple of reasons. One, I'm the most accident prone person in the world. Um, and so many of you um, or your colleagues have put plasters on, put splints on, stitched me up, you know, put ice packs on my head. Uh, and the like over the many years of my life that I've spent trying to, you know, do things to more extreme levels than my older brothers and paying the price for it. Um, but also, I grew up in a, in a household where my mother was one of the only two nursing sisters in the small community that I lived in. Um, and it was really interesting, when mum got married back in the, the early 60s, she had to retire. She wasn't that she just, um, you know, was going to take some time off when she had her family. She actually had to retire. I found that quite extraordinary in talking to her um, about that experience. Luckily for her, she was the only person who was qualified to relieve the matron when the matron went on holiday. So she was allowed to at least stay um, working as a nurse until she fell pregnant. And then that was absolutely um, the end of her nursing career at that time. She retired. Um, she spent a number of years um, bringing up a family and by the time uh, me and my brother were old enough to go to school, the nursing profession and, uh, and Australia, Australia's laws had changed in such that she was able to go back to work. And you sort of think about that in the context of the workforce challenges that you are all facing at the moment. Can you imagine that if every single one of you who got married or had a child had to retire, we wouldn't have much of a profession left, would we? But I think it does really highlight the workforce challenges that, that Australia is facing at the moment, particularly in the care sector. And having come and still um, spend most of my time in rural and regional South Australia, understand the extraordinary pressures that our rural, regional and remote workforces are under. Uh, and for those of you in the room who do work in rural, regional and remote um, health, can I acknowledge the additional pressures that, that you are um, under at the moment? <clears throat> I mean, once again, you know, having grown up in a small town where the hospital was the centrepiece of our community um, and the importance that that hospital provided for all of our health workers, the fact that it kept our GPs in town, and now I look at the challenges that are facing um, rural, regional and remote um, health at the moment, 
uh, it is really quite concerning and something that I have got a very deep and abiding interest in and something that I will be certainly hoping to work with you and others in the health sector to work out how we can alleviate some of the, con uh, the issues and challenges that are facing um, people who live outside of the metropolitan area. I mean, one of the other things that seems <clears throat> a big challenge to us is the sort of the intertransferability of staff, care staff, between different sectors um, and with the challenges of a insufficient quantity of, of workforce being available at the moment with closed borders for so many um, years. And, and I think to some degree, perhaps the, the negative implications we saw, particularly with um, nursing in the aged care sector following the Royal Commission, that we have some challenges about making sure that we put nursing back on the top of the pedestal as one of the most aspirational, worthwhile and, and rewarded professions for Australians to want to undertake. Um, so I acknowledge absolutely that we need to pay our care workforce and our nursing and healthcare workers um, appropriate, adequate and a fair remuneration. Um, and I don't think anybody in Australia with um, half a heart or half a brain would be arguing with that. But I think one of the things that I would like to acknowledge the college for are all the other things that go towards making nursing a rewarding career um, that are outside of just um, looking at, at wage rates. I mean, the education, the training, the leadership um, that is provided by this organisation, I think is, is an absolute testament to the organisation and I acknowledge you for that. Um, and I also acknowledge um, the fact that you've all gathered here today. I mean, we were sort of laughing about the fact that you, you come and you listen to people um, give presentations and I'm sure you take a lot away from that. But last night on the dance floor, dancing and meeting up with your colleagues and letting off a bit of steam is probably just as important. Um, you know, I always believe networking is a legitimate part of, of your business life and you should absolutely relish the time that you're up here to actually connect with each other because after the two and a half years of wandering around in some of the most extraordinary PPE that you, you've, you've had to endure, not having holidays, having to work extraordinary long hours and the kind of pressure and uncertainty that you've lived under for the last two and a half years, I think you absolutely deserve a few days in the warmth in Darwin, letting off steam, having a dance and, and having an opportunity to, to spend some time with each other. But in, in recognising what you do, um, there was a couple of things that I noticed um, in looking at the college's website. Um, it, in initiatives like the, the Nursing Now Australia, um, you know, the unbelievable power of empowering yourselves, unbelievable ability of the belief in self-worth, um, I thought was an extraordinary initiative um, and I'm really, really interested to see how we can actually put nurses at the forefront of the challenges that, that are facing Australia's health industry because you are the ones with probably the broader scope of practice outside of um, doctors of any part of our health profession. So very, very excited to, to see that and also the, the strong nurse program, which probably is one more focused on the empowerment of nurses. So um, congratulations on realising the importance of, of a healthy culture in your workplace. Um, I think many people think of you know, a healthy culture in a workplace as something good because you feel good in the workplace. I think we also fail to see the productivity gain of a, of, of a good culture. Um, we certainly know when people are going to work where they feel respected, where they feel empowered uh, and the, where they feel valued. And it's funny about that, they tend to actually be the more productive workplaces around Australia. So I absolutely acknowledge the fact that you saw the value in doing that. Um, and one of the things that, um, you know, coming into the opposition, um, I want to absolutely um, commit to you that we aren't here as an opposition to get in the way of good government. I mean, I've said this to the minister himself, um, you know, where the government put, puts forward good policies on behalf of the health sector, I will absolutely support them. Equally, if he puts them some policies forward that I don't think are so good, um, I'll be the first one to call them out for it. I will also be making sure that many of the promises and commitments that have been made by the current government are delivered. And that's where I'm really keen to work with you to make sure that things that you believe are going to make positive changes to your area 
uh, and your sector. Very, very happy to take those forward, but equally very happy to work hand in hand with the government to make sure that we're delivering good health policy for the betterment of, a, of our great health system uh, in Australia. I certainly won't be in opposition for an opposition's sake. But um, there is a big job ahead of us. I mean, despite the fact that we probably can pride ourselves as having one of the best health systems in the world, uh, it's certainly not without its challenges. Um, but I feel really, really privileged to have had the opportunity um, now to be the Shadow Minister for Health and Aged Care um, and Sport. Uh, and over the next three years, I give you my absolute commitment and undertaking that I will work tirelessly, first of all, to get myself up to speed, because this is a massive portfolio and gaining a, even a, a light but broad understanding of everything that happens within the sector is going to be challenging enough. And so that's why I'll be relying very heavily on organisations like the Australian College of Nursing um, to provide me with the information and the background so that I can advocate as strongly as I possibly can on your behalf. So I'm here with a commitment to listen and learn. I'm here with a commitment to make sure that I stand up for you and the interests of all nurses across Australia. Um, I wish you all the best with the last day of your program. Hopefully not too many hangovers in the room this morning. I uh, wish you all the best to heading home to wherever you come from. Uh, and uh, I look very much forward to working with you over the next three years as we par pave a way for our continued great health sector in Australia. So thank you very much for having me. Senator Austin, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us this morning. And I think there were some, some fabulous things in, in what you've said there this morning about empowering for us as a profession. Kylie and I particularly like the way that you spoke about how you're going to work with the government of the day, and putting health first rather than party politics first. We liked that. But our favourite bit was when you said networking was really important. I mean, as if we needed encouragement, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> And so just a little token, this is um, it's a, a year in review of ACN, so it's a bit busy, uh, but anyway, you know, just oh, a little you. bit of in-flight reading material. <laughs> and another gift, we've got these beautiful, they've been made by a Canberra artist. Uh, it's a cheese board where you, in which you can fit a lot of cheese, I've said that before. Yeah. Mm. If, if, if you're not into cricket, cheese, it's cricket. cricket. Yeah. Um, and look, if you, uh, look I, I wouldn't like to be the person that encouraged but I think it could be a weapon. No, cricket. 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 All right, then. I don't do sport, <laughs> but anyway, there you are. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Join me in thanking Senator Thank you. Thank you.